quickly give you the idea of this project. Um, so basically, Julia is a new programming language. Uh, like its main purpose of this programming language is uh, for a statistical, I mean, not from scientific computing. I mean, all kinds of scientific computing can, be, uh, they want to develop a, a statistical language, uh, sorry, a computer programming language, which can uh, do the computing very easily. It should have the, you know, uh, advantage feature of like, easily programmable high level kind of programming uh, so if you have a so sort of almost like a, a pseudo code with some little bit of syntaxing it should be able to apply it uh, it should be able to run kind of thing and it should have uh, it should able to process as fast as c or perl and it should be able to um, do the things, uh, handle big data. So these are the main features um, that Julia claims to achieve. Some of many things they have already achieved, many things they need to achieve further. Now, what they have done, uh, it's, it's about 10 years old. Uh, the, and one of the founder, there are four founders. The main idea was by Alan Edelman. And uh, he's a professor of applied mathematics at MIT. And uh, so their idea and another founder is uh, Viral Shah. Uh, interestingly, Viral is a uh, close, uh, connected to my colleague Ajay Shah and Susan Thomas. And that's how we got the project uh, to run. Now, uh, this idea of uh, that it will run as faster than R or Python is coming from the idea that R or Python is a interpretable language means every uh, language, every step you write in Python or R will uh, go to C++ compiler or a Fortran compiler, and then it will compile and compute, and then it will come back to the R or Python. So there will be a communicating, always there is a communicating between, back and forth between R, Python, and the compiler level language, the C or typically C or C++. Now, what Julia did, Julia learned from Java language. So Java has a concept called, Java is a compiler language. It has something called Java Virtual Machine, JVM. So when you write any code, it compiles in JVM and that makes it very fast. So there is a compiler uh, language is called LLVM. So Julia, essentially native Julia language uses this LLVM uh, low level virtual machine basically to compile the native Julia language. So that makes it way faster than R Python and since it can process much faster, it can process much bigger data set typically than R Python. So they claim that it is much more suitable for big data processing and uh, you know doing uh, more uh, uh, advanced statistical computing. So that is their main claim. So, uh, Professor Kavita and I were working on, at least mainly Professor Kavita is studying this uh, Nikke polynomial for a while now. I initially, I was also involved and we were, while studying this uh, Nikke polynomial, we being, you know, uh, statistician, 
I always keep thinking of okay when I'm studying a mathematical model, how do I implement? It always comes in my mind. So um, I was doing search on what are the programming packages are available on Zernike polynomial, and we found only a MATLAB and one MATLAB package which is the most developed and one recently developed Python packages are available on Zernike polynomial. And turns out most of the data sets that are used, need to be used or for fitting a Zernike polynomial are going to be typically image data. And image data are typically very large and um, it's big in nature in typically. So that immediately comes in my mind that well, uh, having a Julia package uh, on Zernike polynomial will make it much more efficient. It will be much more efficient if we can have develop a Julia package. So it is developing any package is always a bit of a uh, uh, ambitious prop challenge, but let us try. That is my uh, goal. And I'm sure if we put enough effort all of us put a little bit of effort put together will make it a very decent and good package at least to begin with on a zernike polynomial in julia so that is the uh, starting point do you have any question i mean what is what we are trying to do here uh, yes uh, sir um, i was wondering whether we'd be um whether we'd have to know anything about, let's say, the physical uses, of, like the uses of Zernike polynomials in physics or image, like like you said, image processing to, you know, work on this, or will it just be at the level of, you know, implementing certain formulas that have already been derived in some sense? So when we will do at a programming stage, just knowing certain formula and implementation will be uh, enough. But uh, that is like, I feel like, that way of looking at a problem is more like you know you're doing a clerical job right without understanding what is doing you are being given a programming and you are just implementing it being a proper scientist you would like to also know that you know at least some of the applications of zernike polynomial in depth so uh i would recommend at least uh I mean, Professor Kavida is working on Zernike polynomial, application of Zernike polynomial in, uh, you know, uh, in ophthalmology. Okay. So at least uh, you will know one of the applications in, uh, in ophthalmology from Professor Kavita. There are, uh, there are other applications also, but at least knowing one good application while working, at least good, at least knowing will be, I think would be good. Oh, so I think without, uh, but when we will develop the package, as you were saying, we only need to know that, you know, okay, this, there is a matrix that needs to be inverted, or here is a formula that needs to be uh, implemented in Julia. And when you are implementing, when you are doing these operations, you just need to be careful that it, it is written in somewhat efficient way the algorithm you are trying to write it is somewhat efficient way that those things we need to be careful uh, so there it will be you have to be wearing more uh, hat of a computer scientist uh, but i think at least today we will start with the what is the nikke polynomial what are the applications so that part uh, professor kavita will tell you so i'm going to hand this thing over to professor kavita and um, maybe next time when we will meet that time, we will focus more on how can we think of uh, implementing it. Okay. So Kavita? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So now it's uh, it's to you. I, I have to just make you co-host, right? Yeah. So I'll make you co-host. Yeah. Okay. Now you're cool. Okay. 
yeah thank you. uh okay so welcome everyone uh so i'm just going to give you a uh, an overview i don't know much about julia programming uh whatever work i've been doing is in matlab and python um but i can tell you what these uh, what this computation is about and what is expected from the toolbox at least from this uh ophthalmology uh standpoint but uh, the zernike polynomials themselves are applicable in many other areas of optics okay uh, so i'll just give you a sort of uh, background of what this is about and then uh, maybe we can talk about some details so uh, so zernike polynomials are essentially uh, a set of orthogonal orthonormal uh, bases for uh, describing uh or they are orthonormal on the unit disk essentially okay if you know some uh, analysis and uh, you know are comfortable what? with this language hello with, with respect to which inner product are the orthonormal ah uh, so there is a uh, so i can uh, there is this inner product defined with the integral i think with the l1 norm Okay, integral f g d x that integral minus one to one or minus infinity to one. Minus one to one. Okay. 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 So, uh, so with respect to that norm, this is a set of orthonormal polynomials on the unit disk. So the reason why they are used uh, in uh, the area that I'm going to talk about is the following. So, this area is called as wavefront reconstruction. so wavefront reconstruction means the following at least in the uh, you know uh, small area of ophthalmology it means the following so so imagine that you have um, a sensor okay some kind of sensor okay this could also be the human eye okay the retina of the human eye okay so this is some kind of sensor or retina and you have light uh, falling on this okay so if there is nothing in between the light uh, and the sensor okay then what you have is uh, is light coming as a plane okay so that is called as a plane wavefront okay so you can think of these rays being incident on a plane and so th the plane is what is propagating towards the sensor okay so this is called as plane wavefront and then there is nothing to do here okay. uh, on the other hand if there is something between uh, so you are viewing some object and uh, between that object and the sensor there is uh, some something that makes these the light rays deviate okay could be a lens uh, in most cases that i am looking at it is a lens okay so there is a lens between uh, the light rays and the eye and so now when the light falls on this lens it's going to get deviated right so uh, how to measure how uh, so the, the the idea of wavefront construction is to find an equation for this wavefront okay so wavefront reconstruction means uh, to find the equation that describes equation that describes is that surface like arbitrary function or is that a normal uh, semicircular with par par no no so uh, yeah that's what we'll come to okay we'll come to that in a moment so this is the to find the equation that describes the wavefront okay so this wavefront although uh, it means the front of the propagated waves uh the equation that describes the wavefront will also describe this uh whatever is the lens or whatever is the surface that is deviating these waves light waves okay so to find the equation that describes the wavefront and uh, since this is going to be uh, in this the surface we are going to assume is a two dimensional surface okay so we can represent it with Two variables w x y. 
okay so we want to find the equation that describes this wavelength so at least in the case that i am studying it uh, this is going to be some uh, lens okay so you can think about it as a contact lens for example okay or you can think of it as the human uh, eye lens okay so uh, this is the lens and we want to study uh, the equation of this lens so now uh, why is that important uh, this is important for many reasons uh, so for example uh, you go to the doctor and you check your uh, suppose you are wearing glasses and you go to the doctor to check the power of your eye okay so then the uh, if you have ever seen your uh, uh, card uh, prescription card carefully there will be a spherical power a cylindrical power and an axis right so there will be these three things listed in the uh, card so these three things turns out uh, describe parts of this wavefront okay parts of the lens of the human eye that are creating certain deviations in the path of the light okay but there are many more okay so uh, there are finer things so so it turns out that this wxy uh, if you write if you expand this as a taylor polynomial so taylor polynomial in two variables right so uh, this is going to be some um, uh, so, uh, let me say f uh, for the for the moment let me write 0 0 but it could be some ab okay so f 0 0 plus uh, f prime 0 0 uh, times or we can do this around uh, a and b okay so whatever x minus yeah in general if we do write it like this x minus a y minus b plus f double prime so remember f double prime uh, f prime f double prime now these this is a function of two variables so this is going to be uh, like your first derivatives this will be the matrix of second derivatives and so on okay x minus a comma y minus b so i'm just writing it in a sloppy way but remember your two dig uh two variable taylor polynomial okay so the coefficients there will be some coefficients that appear in the expansion okay so uh if you don't do this with the uh, taylor polynomial expansion but you do with some other you can also do this expansion with respect to other uh bases okay other polynomials as bases so if this, when this expansion is done with respect to the zernike polynomials okay then you get the zernike expansion of wxy okay so uh, wxy can also be expanded using zernike polynomials so in short i will just write this as summation aj sum zj xy okay where zj is the jth zernike polynomial then um if if these coefficients can be so the these polynomials are known okay the list of polynomials is known uh and uh, it can be checked they are orthonormal and everything so if these coefficients can be found okay then you will have found this wavefront okay so one thing is if you know the wavefront already then you can find its expansion okay the other th uh, the other way problem is if you don't know the formula for the wavefront then from certain other information such as um, we will see uh, there are two three different ways of using experimental information to derive uh, or to find these coefficients so if you find these coefficients then you can use this um, expansion to you know say that the wavefront is approximated by this linear combination okay so uh, that is how it works and the problem that i am working right now on uh, is the following that uh, so there are various ways of doing this okay so estimating wxy from experimental information so one is called modal reconstruction something else is called zonal reconstruction so using so right here they are using zernike polynomials you could also use fourier uh, expansion okay uh, 
Taylor expansion is also used. There is something called Seidel polynomial. So there are various ways, okay, and various other expansions also. Okay, so the one that I'm working on is called modal uh, wavefront reconstruction, and the idea in modal wavefront reconstruction is the following: that um, the, first of all, there is an experimental setup where uh, you have the image sensor, okay, and uh, something called a Hartman array is is placed in between the source of light and the sensor okay so the hartman array is a grid with uh, these holes at specified okay it's it's a it's a uh, grid with holes on it okay like this so um, the grid size can change according to requirement so usually this will be bigger okay so this hartman grid is this is the hartman grid And uh, a beam of light is made incident on this. If there is nothing else between the uh, between these things, okay, between this and between this sensor and the grid, then when the light passes through the Hartman grid, you will uh, get a grid on your sensor. Okay, so these uh, image points you will see on the sensor. And uh, if if there if it's a plane wavefront, then the expectation, of course, is that uh, the if everything is fine, uh, then there is uh, the distances on the Hartman grid are exactly what are reflected on the sensor. Okay, so you get a copy of the grid on the sensor. Okay, but um, so now if you want. To test uh, a lens or find the wavefront equation of a certain lens, okay. Then uh, what is done is that uh, there is a in the experimental setup, the lens is placed between the uh, source of light. So here is your lens between the source of light and the grid. Okay. So now what will happen is uh, this is going to cause. Uh, uh, so, or is maybe it is the other way. So I can show you a, a picture of the setup. So I uh, either the lens is here or the lens is here. I just need to check. So anyway, what happens is that uh, so let me suppose it's here. So then what happens is that this grid points are instead of being in the original position as they are on the grid. They will appear a bit shifted because the light shifts because of the lens. Okay, the light ray beam has shifted because of the lens. Okay, so the grid points will appear in distorted positions. Okay, the distortion finally depends on what how the light distortion is happening because of this lens. Okay, uh, so now this uh, aberration can be measured in the x and y. So this is a two-dimensional. Thing, right the sensor so you have the x and y direction on this so with respect to these two directions you can measure the deviations in the x direction and the deviation in the y direction at every grid point okay and using these deviations one can uh, reconstruct the uh, wavefront in the following way so suppose w x y so the mathematical idea is very simple Suppose that you have an expansion of the wavefront in this way, okay, as a linear combination of Zernike polynomial. Uh, then, if you take the derivatives of, if you take the derivative of w with respect to x and with respect to y, then what is going to happen is you you are going to have this as summation a j, right? Uh, and then this is going to be summation a j. Uh, daba z j by daba y. Okay, so now the point is that the coefficients remain the same. Okay, you can uh, see that the ages are going to be the same either way. Okay, and now these, on the other hand, uh, can be shown to be equal to the deviation. So here, the deviation in the x direction. Suppose I call it delta x for a certain point. Okay, so 
for one point. So delta x at the so let me uh, properly give this a numbering. Okay. So suppose this is the Hartman grid. Let me take four by four for now. The numbering of uh, there is a linear numbering for this. So you do one, two, three, four, go down, then five, six, seven, eight. That's the numbering for the grid points. Okay, and so on. Okay, up to sixteen. Okay, so this deviations are being measured at every grid point. So there is delta x at every x i comma y i, right? And there is a delta y. At every x i comma y, where i varies from one to sixteen. Okay, so uh, at every point, if uh, if we evaluate this at the point x i y i, this actually equals delta x at x i y i divided by So this can be shown; it's not difficult. Uh, divided by the distance d, where d is the distance between the grid and the sensor. Okay, and so that is why I think this lens is supposed to be on the left of the grid. But okay, that doesn't matter for us. Um, so on the one hand, the derivative of w with respect to x is this, and on the other hand, it is this sum. Okay. similarly here this is equal to delta y uh yeah let me write it properly uh, delta y at x i y i is equal to derivative of w with respect to y at x i y i which is equal to the sum again evaluated at x i y i okay so we have that each that this sum at x i y i Is equal to this measured quantity, and the derivative with respect to y, this side is equal to this measured quantity. Okay, so uh, when you, when one is build, building the toolbox, the assumption is that you are given uh, the either these images, okay, uh, this kind of image with the shifts, okay, either that is given to you, or uh, you are given. the actual data which contains uh, the locations of these points okay the with the plane wave front and with the wave front that is being tested okay this is the this is called the lens or the wave front that is being tested okay so that will be the given data okay uh, and then uh, you can compute this differences so this delta x is simply going to be maybe your blue points minus the black points here okay so the those distances in the x direction and the y direct direction because each point has two coordinates x y correct so you can take the differences in the x coordinates and differences in the y coordinates so that is going to give you a delta x and delta y now there are some finer things to be noted when when it comes to building the toolbox uh, we can talk about it that you know uh, and yeah he, this is some something that uh, um maybe if you have used some open cv before you already know and if you haven't uh, this is but this is not difficult to pick up the point is that when the light falls through an array or anything the light beam doesn't fall as a single point okay it will usually be a region some circular region okay but when you need this for computations you want to pick up a point now what is done is uh one usually calculates the center centroid of this region okay of this blur that is seen on the screen and that centroid is taken to be the uh, point x i y i for measurement okay so sometimes the data from the data you might have to also calculate this centroid first and then proceed with the calculation okay so there are various um, ways in which data may be presented either as these blurs or these dots or as readings of these points okay uh, or simply as images and from that images you have to do the entire processing so uh, 
okay just to mention that all right so once we have this once we so our main equations in this uh, computation are that delta x over uh, d uh, is equal delta x over d at x i y i is summation a j z j uh, sorry derivative of z j with respect to x at x i y i this is one equation and the second equation is delta y over d at x i y i is summation a j delta z j over delta y at x i y i okay so if some anybody has any questions up to here um i can take them now and then we can proceed after that uh, yes ma'am so, i have a i actually have a yes. question about like the domain that we're assuming over here so he said the zani ke polynomials are orthonormal over the unit circle yeah. but it looks like we're like i don't really see where the the lens is the unit circle or the human eye the pupil of the human the lens of the human eye or the pupil is the unit circle okay so we yes. are actually considering like like even on the plane that we are viewing it at that is the unit circle like we are yeah yeah so this is actually three dimension i mean we cannot draw i'm not able to draw of course but this is this lens is the this circular lens okay so all these grid points are like just inside the inside this like unit circular region like where it, yeah or like we've scaled it down to like we've assumed uh, so here you mean right here yeah yes, you yes, can no, yeah. you can yeah you can think of them as being inside a unit circle or uh, we will uh, so if one is not considering this radius being one then uh, normalize but you will have to normalize and scale yes ma'am yeah that that makes sense okay, okay. or Thank otherwise uh, yeah or otherwise this radius can come into play later in the calculation Uh, we have the okay but yeah that's that. the point you will always have to normalize the data if it is not normalized already we will have the uh, rotational symmetry right if you consider only one projection uh, it will just be circle of revolution like a function of revolution uh, since this is circular and the reference are also so the yeah so the the problem occurs when the problem occurs because this is not exactly a uh, this lens may not be smooth it's not a smooth surface like this okay there are aberrations along this surface that we want to measure okay 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 so this wavefront the whole wavefront measurement or reconstruction problem is that from this can you say uh, so i will show you a picture of aberrations how aberrations can be okay and the aberrations can be very local in nature okay at different point there can be different aberrations or aberration means deviation from the normal way that it should look the deviation from this smooth surface okay this is a smooth surface perfect surface there is no uh, there are no ups and downs no concavities convexities on on its surface this is smooth but in real life or in the, for the human eye also there will be some aberrations okay yes yeah and at every point this aberration can be different although remember that we are still discretizing the data so we, when this wave front is a continuous function okay but the whole process is done with a, with using a discrete data okay so there's only uh, i mean you will still be uh, sort of approximating this continuous function with a with uh, some discrete data or a discrete information like these coefficients and all okay so you will be lo locally you will be able to say that at this point uh, it looks like this but you globally you know uh, it has the same limitations that any such approximation has okay yeah any other question okay so if there are no questions then let's come down to just solving this okay so how to solve this well the solving problem is the, e the solving is the easiest part because um, all we do is so here i suppose i have 16 grid points okay 
now uh, two things to note one the polynomials zj zj that is the zernike polynomials are known okay and in fact uh, i will show you their definition in after this description is done so zernike polynomials these are in fact defined uh, using two indices and the indexing can be changed from double indexing to linear indexing there's a formula to go from one to the other okay uh, that's one thing and the second thing is that zernike polynomials originally are defined in polar coordinates okay but of course there you can convert them to cartesian coordinates also okay so there are uh, formulae for all of these in polar coordinates uh, in uh, cartesian coordinates and there are also known formulae uh, like uh, uh, analytic formulae for their derivatives okay so all z primes so uh, so there are for z n rho theta as well as for z n x one okay uh, so actually we don't require to go to z n we only require to go to the first derivative in all these reconstructions so and uh, with respect to theta okay uh, for all j's are known okay that is not uh, anything great you just have the analytic and you have analytic formula for the uh, polynomial so you can derive analytic formula for the derivatives okay so the list for these formula are available okay and so uh, in order to solve this problem we uh, employ the uh, generally the number of equations will be more than the number of variables here okay so the number of variables how many variables are there so uh, typically one goes up to 36 there are many of course right so but typically in practice one needs to go up to 36 of these 36 zernike polynomials okay so uh, we want to estimate a1 a, uh, and the numbering goes from a0 but anyway for to make things simpler right now i will just say we want to estimate a1 a2 up to a36 okay and we are given the left hand side uh, or we are we have we have experimental observations for the left hand side of this formula so then we just form the system of equations which contains these quantities in the matrix okay so these are known right we know the coordinates x i y i for all i we know the analytic formula for these derivatives so this this quantity can be computed okay so we can form the matrix with these computed quantities and these come from experimental observation and these ages has to have to be estimated so all this information can be put together in matrix form as follows so you put daba z1 over daba x at x1 y1 okay and so on daba z1 over daba x uh, or let's do it this way daba z since we want 36 of these okay 36 at x1 y1 okay then daba z2 by, uh, sorry daba z1 by daba x at x2 y2 so all these evaluated at the second grid point 36 over in practice though you will have to keep this 36 as a user defined input okay the user may want to go beyond or below 36 okay. and so on daba z1 by daba x uh, x36 uh, sorry x16 16 grid points y30 y16 daba z36 daba x x16 y16 okay so these uh the this actually forms half of the matrix so you want to evaluate a1 up to a36 right equals so these are all 
so look at uh, if you multiply the first row of this with uh, the uh, column a okay so i'm just going to call this column a then you get the first equation here you will get the equation here right so with respect to uh, the first uh, coordinates x1 y1 or the first grid point that's what this first evaluation so it is going to be equal to daba x i'll just call, pull out this one over d daba x at x1 y1 okay so this matrix multiplication gives rise to this first entry here then the second row multiplied by a is deviation at in the x direction at x2 y2 and so on the last entry gives rise to deviation in the x direction at the grid point x16 y16 okay but you also have deviations in the y direction so you can pile them up in this matrix okay and so now we write down daba z1 by daba y x1 y1 so all the equations will come together z36 by daba y x1 y1 and just like we wrote the x derivatives these are the y derivatives x16 y16 2 daba z36 over daba y x16 y16 okay so here you get on the left hand side your matrix okay. so this is your system of equations and we can complete this also deriva uh, deviations in the y direction at x1 y1 dot 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 deviation in the y direction at x16 y16 so this completes the system of equations these are all the equations that you know from this star okay and now so uh, what are the dimensions of these so 36 so suppose n is the number of coefficients that you want to estimate okay so as i said you will have to let the user define this okay so you can say n is the number of coefficients to be estimated Uh, let k be the number of grid points in the hartman array okay then the dimension of this matrix as you can see is going to be 2k cross n okay and this one is uh, n cross 1 okay and so this as you can see this is 2k cross 2k cross 1 okay so you have 2k equations and uh, n number of uh, variables to be uh, estimated okay so this is usually over determined set of equations because you will have uh, first of all then you definitely need at least n grid points correct whatever so definitely you will have more than n grid points you will have many more and uh, it turns out that the more for the least square solution of this problem the more number of grid points you have the better okay so suppose i write the system of equations as mm, some t a equal to d d because deviations okay so this is the matrix t this is the vector a that we want to estimate okay uh, small a if you like t a equal to d okay so suppose this is the system of equations that we want to solve then you can solve this using least square methods and solving using least square methods is uh, like uh, very standard you can do this um, either using the pseudo inverse or you can do this using svd okay any one of these things is possible and that solves the problem so once you have estimated this a you are done you have estimated those a's are called the zernike coefficients okay so you have estimated a and then using that you can uh, uh, so it is used for many purposes so let me stop stop sharing this screen and show you some images of aberrations and uh, 
sort of how these zernik the coefficient determine what kind of aberration is seen on the lens okay so in fact you also if you uh, just google zernik coefficients and uh, you look at the images okay you will see a lot of images so i'm just going to share one of those images that are uh, available on the wikipedia page okay and uh, describe it from there okay so let me just share screen yeah so uh, you see this pyramid right so this pyramid these are uh, so as they say here these are the first 21 zernike polynomials the first one on the top here okay gives no information this is the z00 these are two indices okay z00 or in linear indexing this is z0 this gives no information okay um, but uh, now look here this what is this band telling you this band is telling you that there is a tilt in the lens in some direction okay so this is the x tilt and this is y tilt so this information is given exactly by the coefficients z1 and z2 uh, coefficient of z1 and z2 which means a1 and a2 okay the numbers that appear there will tell if there is a tilt in the lens okay then the coefficients of z3 z4 and z5 say if there are aberrations of this kind so imagine this in a three dimension okay so with the uh, red and uh, blue are being concave and con convex okay concavities and convexities in the lens okay so actually um, we can also find images which uh, which sort of describe this in three dimensions so yeah here so these are uh, surface aberrations so there is a question kavita uh, yeah ronil what is the advantage of expanding it with respect to zernik polynomials instead of some other polynomials i think ortho yes yes ortho normality is one thing but there are also yeah there are there are some there are a few analytic properties of the zernik polynomials which make them more desirable okay we can talk about them uh, i mean if somebody is interested we can go into the analysis of that later so this see this is what i meant by tilt okay the tilt in uh, one direct this sort of tilt this and the numerical uh, representation of this tilt is given by the corresponding zernik coefficients okay so this see this is what i meant by uh, you know th there is a defocus here um, what it means is that um, well uh, it's very difficult to explain but it's an aberration in the lens so here this is more clear when you go ahead okay so it is more clear so this kind of aberration appearing at a certain point okay so the lens is distorted in these various ways that is what these coefficients tell us uh, the measure of the distortion on the lens okay uh and so when when i mean when you go to a doctor and they check the, your eye lens uh, how your lens is they will get these uh, numbers okay so usually it is just astigmatism defocus and this astigmatism two kinds of astigmatism that are being uh, checked okay for a normal human eye this is enough but if you go for um, Uh, some eye surgery or uh, you know uh, some corneal surgery or anything then the ophthalmologist really have to look at a lot of these okay because they have to determine very carefully exactly what where the laser has to be focused uh, what changes have to be made to undo the aberration that is present in the lens okay so in that case uh, in even up to z36 they will look at these are called higher order aberrations and these are lower order aberrations the lower order first five these are usually enough for you know your eye glass prescription or a lens, uh, contact lens prescription these are enough but if you need any other uh, or if there is any eye surgery or lens surgery being done 
then the ophthalmologist have to look at even these so this is only from the ophthalmology point of view but also in telescope design uh, you know these kind of things have to be studied so i don't know much about that area i just know about this uh, in the ophthalmology sense okay so are there any questions so the mathematical formulation is quite clear and not difficult at all okay yeah if you have any questions you can ask so right now i have a math a matlab formulation of this and uh, we are working with we are working in matlab there are a few matlab toolboxes available there are also some people have tried julia uh, so i just uh, i was just searching and i found that some people have all, uh, tried doing this in julia but uh, so there are many variations of this experiment so let me just share uh the main resource or the main reference that we are using for this uh this paper i can share the paper with whoever is interested so this is sort of the uh, experimental setup yeah the lens is before the grid this is the scanner okay here is the grid here is the lens and from here a beam of light is being projected on this okay so this is the uh, setup and uh, yeah this is sort of a picture of that uh, i sort of lost thread of what i was going to say mm. yeah so so oh yeah sorry sorry yeah this is what i was going to say uh, so this hartman grid setup is one way of doing this entire uh, process okay there is um, something called shack hartman which came uh, which is a modification of this hartman grid in which instead of using one grid this way they use small lenses called lenslets in place of every hole okay that's called the shark heart pen grid i don't know exactly what are the advantages of using shark heart pen over hartman but that is uh, what people use more than the hartman grid nowadays uh, and there are many other ways also of constructing the wavefront okay so this problem is uh, i mean if you want to build toolboxes for ophthalmologists like this uh, or based on the zernike polynomial reconstruction of wavefront there is considerable thing to be done uh, you can also go ahead and uh, do this with uh, fourier uh, with the fourier uh, series or fourier polynomial okay there are as i said there are other uh, bases also so zernike polynomials are not the only basis although they have some very nice properties which is why they are preferred but it can be also done with other polynomials and um, people do it so there is something called zonal reconstruction also which is done with fourier polynomials okay. so that one is also quite popular so you can also have a toolbox for that kind of thing so the toolbox if you ask me what should it entail it should entail uh, it should uh, let the user um, provide a set of images from this sensor okay that will be a sort of dream toolbox that uh, the images from the sensor are provided and the uh, coefficient the, the information pertinent information such as what are the what is the distance between the grid and the scanner this all this is provided and then finally the coefficients have been estimated that will be like a, very useful toolbox yeah i think i am done with saying whatever there was thanks kavita um anybody have any question so uh i was thinking uh, so couple of things that was in my mind so one problem that i'm facing is um that i'm not sure i know most of the students in this group are um, bsc uh, program and maybe got couple of you are from msc program 
but mostly you are from BSc program, but with different years. So what I was thinking, I'll just create a Moodle page for this project. And you guys join that uh, project. So it will be under the data science uh, heading, header in the Moodle page. And you guys, please join that. Then we will have a reasonable idea. Okay, these are the people who are interested in this project and want to contribute in this project. Uh, second thing, Kavita, I was thinking, um, if we if we can share that uh, particular paper, um, yeah. which with which we want to start with, so that I will put it into the model, so that students. Yes. So this paper I can share, and it has all the details of, I mean, whatever I said it short. Every, the details are all here. Like this is the actual definition of the Zernike polynomial in uh, polar coordinates. And this is the uh, definition in x, y coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates, after conversion, stuff like that. Everything is here. And um, I mean, for anybody who is interested in this, uh, there's a good reference book and uh, that can also be shared. OK, OK. And OK, so Bijay and Ray, he's saying, can we uh, create a Discord server as well and work together in that? Um, I never worked on uh, Discord server, so I'm not sure. Uh, so what is it? Can you tell me what is it exactly? It's like uh, WhatsApp only, but in the uh, same server, we have different ch channels. We can create like one for actual works, one for programming type one for, and it also, it has some bots that can support Latex in it. And also we can share codes. Uh, on it that supports like un unlike WhatsApp. Acha. One thing we can do, it will be easier. Uh, so the this project is mainly supported by Xcadia forum. So they are um, uh, they are using something called uh, you know uh, Mattermost. It's an app basically, and uh, this is exactly does what. We are, you just told me. I think what I will do, I will ask Ayush, uh, who is basically uh, the point of contact for all these things. So I'll ask for first you guys join the, uh, the Moodle page so that I will have a sense of idea that okay, who are the people who are really interested in. And I'll share their name and email ID. Uh, with Ayush and Ayush will send you the invitation to join this Mattermost. Uh, it's a it's a kind of private app, uh, but it is very useful and it, it just exactly does the same thing. So I think it will be very helpful. So, and in that way, my all other things are will be in the same page. And in any way, probably we are going to start a much more, uh, a regular uh, kind of uh, weekly seminar on Julia, uh, so so that you will get the invitation from Ayush as well on what are the things other people are doing on Julia, and so if you attend those Julia seminars, I think your learning on Julia will be much faster as well. Uh, second, and the third thing I just want to tell you that. Um, what I realized when we started this project that everybody has a different kind of uh, system. Somebody is using Ubuntu, somebody is using Windows, somebody is using Mac. So easiest way to handle it is you, um, you just install whatever version of Julia is compatible with your um, uh, operating system. And then uh, also uh, have a Jupyter notebook and sync your Julia with the Jupyter notebook and write everything on the Jupyter notebook and then just share your Jupyter notebook uh, with your you know peers and, and, uh, and me and everybody so that anybody can look into your Jupyter notebook and know exactly what you are doing. So it will be much easier and then contribute on that Jupyter notebook and send it back to you. So I think it will be easier if we just all agree to work on 
Jupyter Notebook as the, uh, you know, sort of a, a IDE and uh, so on the Julia. Okay. Uh, so all of you are with me, guys. So I think uh, next thing I will do that I'll immediately, I will upload this recording uh, in the YouTube and I'll set up a Moodle page in the data science under data science heading uh, for this Julia project. Please join that project. And then once you join by this weekend, please join. Once you join, I will share your email ID with Ayush and Ayush will ask you, Ayush will send you an uh, invitation to join the Mattermost. Mattermost does exactly what Vijayan, uh, Vijayan is saying uh, about this called. So it's a, just a private app. Uh, I think for it will be very helpful. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you. Sir. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, thank you, Kavita. So I will also, uh, I hope um, uh, you will be helping, uh, you will be at least meeting, a, we can meet once a week. Is that okay with all? Uh, so yeah, first we have to see if, who is interested in this, right? Uh, yeah. Or are you asking me about this or general Julia meeting you're saying? I'm I'm thinking general. I'll do a general Jul Julia meeting uh, more regularly, and whenever we have some uh, problem with understanding Zanike polynomial or some detail, probably we will ask a separate meeting with you, so that yes. you know that that is fine, right? Yeah, yeah, that is fine. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, okay, thank you all then. Thank you very much. And I'll do the, I'll send you the invitations and I'll set up the Moodle page. Um, so see you soon then. Thank you. Thank you, Kavita. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks everyone for listening. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Recording stopped.